just almost completed a book I wrote called Kalamazoo Gals about the women who built Gibson guitars in the Kalamazoo, Michigan factory during World War II. And I had posted information on the internet about the guitars. Prior to my discovery, people didn't think Gibson built guitars during the war. So in addition to the discovery, I wanted to learn the characteristics, the various qualities of the guitars, and I created an online registry with a friend. And someone following along contacted me. It was a dealer in the northeastern part of the U.S. who had just been contacted by the grandson of a man who bought this guitar in late 1943 in the United States, took it to the European battlefront during World War II, and then just recently died. So the fellow, the grandson contacted the dealer who knew that I had this project and contacted me and said, John, I think I've got something you need to have. This would be late 1943, a Gibson Southerner Jumbo, then called a Southerner Jumbo, later shortened to Southern Jumbo, and these days we call it an SJ, but um, sort of what I would call a fancified or gussied up in, in U.S. terms, a J45, the basic slope shoulder dreadnought with a little bit fancier inlays on it. It is an original, it, a lot of the finishes worn off, all the parts are original, but having lived its early months and years maybe in foxholes, it shows some wear and tear, you know, um, but I think it made it all the more beautiful. So this would be a young man about 18, 19 years old and was getting ready to go off to the war, World War II, probably had some serious suspicions about whether he would come back. So he went to New York City and bought what was then the most expensive guitar, flat top guitar that Gibson made, $125. And so I never got a chance to talk to him. He died before I acquired the guitar, but I can sort of think about why he would do that. You know, he, doesn't know whether he's coming back. He probably has a good suspicion he's going to sacrifice his life. And he wants some joy with him and maybe spread a little joy and beauty around the world as he's fighting this ugly war. So he buys the most expensive, shiniest guitar Gibson makes and then goes across the water and lives in foxholes and fights a war with it. I, um, I will keep it. I will never sell it. I will loan it out. Uh, um, I'm just last weekend, Roseanne Cash used it, played it. Um, I've loaned it out to a lot of people. I've thought of it as my mission with this guitar to use it to tell the story. I think it's more eloquent than I am. Your listeners and watchers will realize that uh, soon. And I, I just like to hand it to people. I've, every, I've been traveling with it for six years. I've probably taken it to Europe. This is probably its eighth or tenth time back. I played festivals or talked at festivals and I asked people to play it. And lots of famous people, Jeff Beck and Mark O'Connor and Ruthie Foster and John Jorgensen, but also just players who connect, I think viscerally through this guitar to the story. I will be in Lesbos, Greece in a few days to take the guitar to teach children guitar at refugee camps. And I think that's a really fitting mission for this guitar to sort of take it back and. You know, it was, it was a, an object, a functional work of art that brought some beauty to soldiers at a time that was really dark. And if it can do that again to children who were living a really dark time in their lives, um, I think that's its mission. So I'm going to travel with it, and I hope that um, when I breathe my last breath that someone else will take it out and keep doing it until it decays completely and is no longer useful.